السلام عليكم معلش اعتذر عن التاخير so my lecture today is about understanding ocular wave front aberrations so i'll start with few definitions now the wave front is an imaginary surface joining all points in space that are reached at the same time by bundling the light rays now this is the ideal so what's wave front and this is the ideal uh, optical system so light usually travels in parallel light rays symmetric and takes the shape of a refractive surface into a single point now the perfect surface does not does not exist in an ideal way uh, the light will eliminate from a single point and it will reach a single point at the retina after passing through the system maintaining a perfect spherical wave front however what happens is that the light travels into imperfect surfaces and it does not reach always a single point creating a, a scatter or an aberration so what's wave front aberration it's the difference between the ideal perfect waveform and the actual real waveform of the eye. This gives an idea of the total distortion in the eye and deviation of the light rays causing images or objects to blur. So, and the aberrometer is a diagnostic device that measures the refractive aberrations of the eye. Now, distortions in the face of the light waves as they pass through the optical system such such as lenses on, uh, such as lenses of the eye and light is focused on the same region in space and not on a single point now the concept is crucial for understanding and measuring the quality of the optical imaging and the vision correction so basically what happens is uh, when we create, when we treat this aberration, we remove the noise from the optical system. We get a better re resolution, some sort of like, of like noise cancelling with our uh, earphones. So the wave front can be reconstructed using Zernike polynomials, and these polynomials can be described uh, in the wave front components. And the aberrations are divided into two categories, and I'm go into these in two details: the low orders the sphere and the cylinder, and the high order, uh, uh, which are the comma, spherical aberrations, and the others. So we have two types. One is low order aberrations, and two high order aberrations. Both of them include the defocus, astigmatism, spherical aberration, comma, and trefoil and tetrafoil. So I'll start with low order aberrations. Low order aberrations are uh, associated with the spherocylindrical refractive error and they constitute up to 85% of aberrations. The three types of low order aberration, tilt, which is insignificant and it's constant for everyone, and defocus, which, are, which is the myopia and hyperopia, and the astigmatism. Low order aberrations can be corrected easily with uh, contact lenses and glasses. So these are the uh, two dimension shapes of the three low order aberrations, tilt, defocus, and astigmatism. Defocus, again, is the myopia and hyperopia. So defocus is basically an image which is out of focus. It's similar to what we see with cameras and microscopes when we focus them. So it reduces the sharpness and the contrast of an image and it, uh, it's composed of myopia and hyperopia again. It's very sensitive to a pupil size, so the larger the pupil, the more uh, apparent the blurness uh, appear. So this is just an image of flamingos showing them with the best focus and when the, uh, with minus one diopter of myopia on the right side. Now, astigmatism ab aberrations is different. So here you have two perpendicular planes and two foci and uh, instead of having a single point. So we have vertical and horizontal astigmatism. And it affects the visual acuity even more than myopia and hyperopia. So, and high, high order aberrations, high order aberrations may not be associated with uh, refractive errors and commonly related to irregularities of the corneal surface and opacities. And it, um, it impact the quality rather than the quantity of vision. 
The typical symptoms for high order aberrations are glare, halos, starburst, ghosting, and double vision. So basically here we, are, we may have patients with 20-20, a good quantity of vision, however, with a poor quality because of the high order aberrations. So again, high orders is a reflection of the quality of vision. Now, high order aberrations uh, are divided into spherical aberrations, coma, and trefoil. Now, spherical aberration is the most prominent out of them and can be positive or negative. Spherical aberration is caused by an abnormal Q value of the cornea. So for the human cornea, the normal Q value ranges between minus 0.1 up to minus 0.6. A negative Q uh, value indicates the normal corneal shape, which is uh, prolate. Any change in that Q value out of the normal will change the spherical aberrations. The symptoms of spherical aberration are glare, halos, night myopia. And it tend to increase after myopic LASIK or in cases of dysfunctional lens uh, syndrome. It may in uh, increase the depth of field and decrease the contrast sensitivity. And this might be positive, and I'm going to go to that later. So the normal human cornea has, again, a value of between minus 0.1 to minus 0.6. After hyperopic treatment, we tend to uh, change the Q value of the cornea, increase the spherical aberration toward the negative. And after myopic treatment, we tend to change it toward uh, the positive. And this, is, uh, this comes to be very important when we select IOLs after refractive surgery. So we, we have to compensate for that in cases of myopic ablation, we tend to select aspheric IOLs in, in cases of hyperopic ablation, spherical IOLs are a better option. Now, spherical aberration is the same concept that is used in EDOF's uh, IOL and in blended vision. So expanding the depth of focus uh, by spherical aberrations might be positive here when we try to use these techniques to help the patient to see at different levels. Coma. Coma is divide, uh, defined as a variation in magnification over the entrance of the pupil. So basically, we have two different parts where we see through, uh, one with, uh, with positive, one with negative, or just uh, different parts. So a lower refractive part or a higher refractive uh, power. And this comes to be in the center of visual uh, axis, and the symptoms are either blur, double vision, and vertical coma is classic for keratoconus. Temporary coma can happen after corneal injury. Another classic example for coma is decentered ablation after refractive surgery. Now, spherical ablation is caused by uh, difference uh, of in a focus point, coma is difference in magnification. When you put them together, spherical more of difference in focus po focused point, while coma is difference in magnification and the refractive power. Coma causes central aberration, so it tends to be more powerful, affects central vision, spherical aberration, and trefoil causes peripheral aberrations. Now, Trefoil is more comes with a starburst uh, symptoms and less degradate the quality compared to coma, and it could be seen in case of tetrafoil with radial keratectomy. So this is just an uh, an example of the uh, a two D example of the trefoil and tetrafoil. So the take home messages for high order aberrations it can not be corrected with classic optics and coma results from variation in magnification and the refractive power. So spherical aberration is caused by an abnormal Q value, and trefoil results from al uh, alternating variation of magnification in the peripheral cornea. Now, we, t we can represent them in the uh, Zernike polynomial pyramid, where the first order are insignificant and constant for everyone, and the second order here as shown in the image, is the representation of the spherocylindrical uh, refractive error, the astigmatism, myopia, and hyperopia, and the third and the fourth are a representation of the 
high order aberrations. Now, high order aberrations are typically analyzed and requested for certain patients, refractive workup and a customized laser vision and vision issues despite having good visual acuity and refractive surprises, and patients seeking uh, premium IOLs cataract surgery. And some would request it for every patient in, in a busy refractive clinic. Now, the measurement depends on three modalities. The point spread function, where we try to plot them and on a chart showing the shape and the deviation on the optical system. And the second is the modulation transfer function, where we uh, measure the redu uh, reduction in of contrast of an Im uh, optical image in the optical sy uh, system. This, is co this comes to be very important when we evaluate the IOLs also one of the measures of the IOL uh, quality. And finally, the root mean, squ mean square, which is important to us, where we uh, quantify the magnitude uh, of deviation in wave front. So a perfect wave front would be a flat and have an RMS of zero, an aberrated wave front, then, uh, an aberrated wave front will then cause the RMS to increase. The greater RMS, the more aberration in the optical uh, system. And finally, the Zernike coefficient, where we can quantify each high order aberration or each aberration alone, and then we get the sum of them, expression of each of them individually. And the normal value for the Zernike coefficient is to, uh, n uh, below 0.25 and above 0.5 tend to be abnormal, in between is uh, suspect. So this is a representation of the uh, aberration pro profile and the quantification. We can tell which high aberration profile is affecting the visual quality exactly. Now the aberrometers are divided into two types, either incoming aberrometer, where uh, we measure the deviation of uh, rays that enter the eye, uh, into a single point, or we measure the outgoing aberrometer that are coming out of the eye and the deviation of these rays on a lenses. So the first one, the incoming rays, the ray tracing. A good example is the eye trace. If the lens has aberrant properties, imperfection rays will, will not converge into a single point and will tend to sc uh, scatter. And we can map this, we can scatter this. The second one is the Hertzman shack, where the outgoing uh, rays coming from the retina can be plotted on uh, lenses, and we can measure this deviation and quantify them again on different maps. Now, there are several factors that can influence uh, aberrations. Aberrations tends to increase with age and tends to in increase as the pupil gets bigger and after surgery. Cataract surgery or refractive surgery tend to affect the uh, aberrations and accommodation also can affect the uh, 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 amount of aberration also and the measurement of the aberration. So as we get older, the RMS, the root mean square tend to increase the largest variation uh, seen with spherical aberration. So you can see here that the patient uh, with 20 years of the same patient uh, uh, growing from 20 to 60, the RMS is growing between from 0.6 and uh, doubles at the age of 60 to 1.04. Now with aging, the optical system tend to change. So young patients start with the rule astigmatism and they add, as they get older, they convert to against the rule astigmatism. Spherical aberrations tend to increase and the contrast tend to decrease with age. Now, a key role is the size that we measure the aberration with. The recommended size is six millimeters, and six, mil six millimeters, the uh, key number also for IOLs and LASIK. That's the number where we have the uh, least amount of uh, aberration with. So this is an MCQ for you guys, so which form of aberration show the greatest variation as we age. Any idea? Which form of aberration show the greatest variation as we age? Ahadi Jawab? 
fourth order, spherical aberrations tend to. So what is one limi limitation for wave front analysis? Ahadi Jawna Swar. Tau job take up the short. B. B. Thank you. So any question? Thank <laughs> you.